this is also the stuff that was involved in MK Ultra. This stuff here. Vladimir Zelensky has top general to step down. And uh, this stuff popped up about what? Um, 16 minutes ago, based on my uh, based on my timing here provided for as you go Ukraine and you go 24 hours. Uh, if I update, it's now 21 minutes ago. All right. So all I wanted to share with you here in this video, this is very, very briefly, is that it's very difficult to point whose fault this is. Um, for me to look at a Zelensky right now and uh, seek somebody that I would get fired to justify uh, my standings as a president, talking about if I were in the in shoes of Zelensky, it would be an impossible thing to do. It would be rather like a desperate thing to do. So what it means to me, this stuff is more like Zelensky is about to step away, step down. Um, I'm not going to say that this should have been the case already six months ago. I'm not saying that this should have been already six months ago. But what I'm saying is I don't want people to step down. I don't want people to step aside. I don't want people to get fired. Zelensky actually even blamed me. He said, and then we're going to be there. And then it's going to be stuff that you see now is going to be. You're going to have to do stuff like this. But the thing is that. I don't want to talk about this. I want to talk about, since I mentioned six months ago, this is deadline, at least, and it's not six months ago, at least seven months ago, that Zelensky allowed himself have crossed uh, into what I see as an area of forbidden meaning that he gave credit to the so-called western allies for none other than a complete failure of ukrainian troops for the last seven months we have faced visually have seen none other than ukrainian ingenuity with the drones defending themselves from beasts attacking them with the tanks super modern equipment from all directions possible dropping on them i don't know 500 or kilos bombs on them uh terror all over ukrainian skies with Putin bombarding civilian targets, killing left and right people with absolutely nothing other than what was promised on how they're going to be F-16 fighter jets delivered uh, at just about any time. And what became also a news that there's no financial needs not even provided for basic ammunition for the shells for for like basic stuff that ukrainian troops were literally getting killed for uh had no ability basically to respond accordingly to uh you know that that you know ladies and gentlemen we are talking about what was a counter offensive a counter offensive a counteroffensive, there are different offensives. The counteroffensive also can be if the positions are stalled and the enemy is losing large amount of hardware troops. That also can be a counteroffensive, but I am doubtful about how efficient that is. Russia reduced casualties, actually loss of hardware, tanks, Armored vehicles for about 40% when compared to, like for half less, and when compared to, uh, I think they said 2022. No, that's basically in 2023, they lost 40% less. They, on the other hand, sacrifice 
budget they increase one to the third of the earnings they dedicate to a war on Ukraine uh, basically not exactly war to Ukraine but manufacturing military production they boosted one they produce as many as 100 tanks per month I heard the news have stated um, you know it's not I don't know how many tanks when compared to the West earn abilities to manufacture tanks uh, but the thing is the Western tanks are not coming to Ukraine um, the thing is that uh, Russian tanks however are heading toward Ukraine and with the use that I mentioned earlier they lose half of less 40% less hardware than what they did in 2022 these are not very optimistic numbers especially if you consider that Russia is boosted its economy uh, is is really reducing its deficit even with the people lost at the front lines people they picked them up from prisons and so on and so forth Putin turned the whole thing into a diabolic machine but with the complete knowledge of the Western politicians they all know about Vladimir Putin's negotiations with a BRICS group on how he will make sure that their manufacturing, their production, their everything doesn't stall even a bit. Because only with that kind of assurance, he was allowed to engage in war against Ukraine with a preemptive agreement with China, with India, and with Brazil. So you can see this either way you want to see it. Uh, but there are no tears in this war when compared to what's happening on the Ukrainian side. But the worst part about it is that Ukraine is not fighting the war for Ukraine. The worst part when it comes to all this is that what we see is happening in Ukraine is a lost cause for Ukrainian people which splits into two branches it goes into two direction branch splits into two directions one is one I don't even know how that would be possible anymore without what the Joe Biden referred to even as yeah, it's actually a video where Joe Biden stated, uh, I don't know if I'm going to pull that video, but Biden stated uh, Let me see if I can pull this out. December, when Biden helped not in San American and then let's see this, if I can Viz this thing out. Joe Biden stated in whichever video Joe Biden stated there will be a Russian soldier facing off with American soldier directly if Russia was to enter a space of any NATO member country. Do you understand the meaning of this? Shit, you do not. It's a very, very bad meaning of it. When you state that you will, and this was also involved in MK Ultra 2, this stuff. When you say that you're going to go and you're going to get into the war directly, if Russia crosses lines with any NATO member state, 
you are basically saying what I suggested for Vladimir Zelensky was overdue seven months ago. A much, not much needed, but a must assistance, direct assistance from American troops, from NATO troops in Ukraine. You're saying basically, fuck you, Ukraine. You're not going to see us. It sounds great when you say, oh, well, you know, it's going to be when, uh, you know, we're going to be directly, you know, if this is where the Russian soldier is going to have to face off directly with American soldier, right? As soon as they cross into a NATO uh, space and so on, this is a lousy, extremely, extremely lousy philosophy under given circumstances. Joe Biden does not even understand how lousy this is. I think he is aware of what's happening in the Baltic states. I think he's very aware of <laughs> what's happening in aerial Russia. Uh, Russia, the president, is like a drunk that is just hitting all over the place. And uh, it's even a difficult to predict what the next stupidity is going to be, what the next stupidity is going to come out of the Russia, because it's a man that leads the country with his team, with his group of people, that things are like this. So it's unpredictable in many ways. But really the message that you sent is quite, uh, is expressive high optimism for Vladimir Putin when you say, you know, stuff like this without providing basic needs for the Ukrainian military to even defend themselves. Fuck this. During, you know, we're going to do the counter-offensive during which we're not going to have the means to even defend ourselves. So what's the good news about that now when it comes to NATO, when it comes to United States of America? Well, the new good news is there is a half a million Ukrainians dead. That is like that good news. And there's like 10 million Ukrainians expelled from their homes. Homeless, not jobless, but abroad looking for jobs. That's that great news. And that makes a whole lot of population. I don't know. What is it? A quarter population? So that's a thumbs up, Joe Biden. That's that's a one one success. I have to give you. I I will attribute to you. As I mentioned earlier, Ukraine. The biggest tragedy of this Zelensky is war is that Ukraine is not war fighting. It's war. It's United States of America. It's Joe Biden, the magician that needs this kind of war. He is the one, he needs this kind of war, because if he wants to strike Russia and take one down completely, he needs, he needs a total annihilation of Ukraine first so he can justify his cause. Just as I have posted here. Just as I have posted here, with this stuff here. Now, what's the news about this kind of stuff? Well, where is the problem here with this kind of stuff? What is the problem with it? Where is the biggest problem with it? What is such a problem? Where is the problem here with it? I mean, what's, what's the problem now with this, with this guy here that, that he needs to step down and or Zelensky that needs to step down? Where is the problem with it? The problem is that Zelensky did not find the way. Obviously, he could not stress the issues. I have stress right now. But there was a great lack of, basically, the inability to speak about, you know, Basically, Zelensky was hiding himself behind the so-called counteroffensive. 
in the counter offensive forget i'm going to go past what ukrainian military uh, accomplished because ukrainian military accomplishments were great incredible ukrainian military accomplishments the war the ukraine fought is heroic and the sacrifice is great it's the problem is just as i stated earlier it's too big it shouldn't be that way that's what angers me the most it's it's uh the inability to stress that ukraine had no instruments to fight back forget it even if you cannot uh, if you cannot uh, make territorial advancements if you can fight back effectively it is just as good as a, a real offensive that is territorially gaining ground now the the problem that Zelensky created is that look what the fuck Ukrainian soldiers are stressing today. They're fucking saying they have nothing left in their hands to fight with, man. They're broke. They have a fucking javelins and stuff like that. And the Russians keep coming with it. Thanks. And the West is trying to rationalize that with a propaganda, with a fake propaganda. I saw the news earlier where it was on a Yahoo display, just as the news they use, they brainwashed me with. It was like a German flag that was waving. It, it was written that Germany is going to dedicate another hundred tanks to Ukraine. Um, this support, German support, when it comes to German support, was great. It was a really, really good support. And I think it was a lot of Germans, really good Germans that were involved in it, that gave their best to help. There was a good amount of these people, good people. But it was a good amount of people from everywhere that wanted to help, from Britain, from all the countries. It was people that they were willing, you know, to, to, to help. To But the thing is that this is no fucking help. The thing is that this is no help when when the russians deliver 100 tanks and and the germans know this the people who wanted to help understand and know this and they are angry at the german administration at this point they're not happy about it because they know this movie is not against germans this movie is not against british this movie is not against americans this is about against fucking rotten administration that is portraying itself through some kind of sacrifice some kind of this is i managed to video record here some kind of look at look at look what the look what the guffy boy is doing eh? he's waving the hands up and this and that and so on like like he's the actor like, all fucking stressed and so on he's making those guffies going back and forth back and forth like he's like he's actually like acting like really creative like he's like you know, the thing is that that uh, this guy went through the war literally through his imagination. He sat at the fucking table or walked somewhere and they dreamed about how it's going to look like. And that's how he's presented to the public the whole thing. On the other side of reality, 10 million Ukrainians is without homes over 500,000 already paid with their lives for his imagination which appetite is fucking stalinistically joseph stalinistically stainless fucking endless this man is more bloody than joseph stalin was and you know that joseph stalin sent numerous people to die basically if you were a soldier in the Soviet Union, you would to turn around, you get the bullet from your superiors. There was only going forwards, backwards was not allowed. And this guy's got a dirty tactic. 
that is actually made Ukraine pray for its fucking dear life, for its existence. Okay, this is not what the ally should be about. With what became evident out of the case of my own, now is becoming more and more bloody. His hands are all covered with the blood. In the case of Ukraine, nobody guarantees if his plan goes through, which possibly is the one that would smash Russia completely down into oblivion with whatever strike, whether that may nuclear strike or whatever it might be, if that was to ever happen, that Ukrainian people will exist. Based on my observation, based on what I have seen, when it comes to the German, British, American elite, at least in my case, that's the opinion I establish myself on the facts. I'm not going to say they see us as unequal, but they definitely see us as a prey, basically as the way to conquer this world. Ukraine today is not fighting war for Ukraine. Unfortunately, in the hands of this man right there, Ukraine is drowning in a blood for the sake of the map that I demonstrated down here. Actually, up here, or down here. So the man you see right there that lo loves to guffy, the guffy boy, can look good, a brilliant military strategist, and if I was to oppose this worm, this parasite that built his entire legacy on me, this man was involved since my early childhood, like earliest childhood possible, talking about Joe Biden. Yet I got to sleep on the streets, in the forest, on the floor, work for minimum wage, found myself in a psychiatric hospital while he lived the life of kings and queens. You understand me what I'm saying? I wouldn't go into the issues of equality because in my case, I'm not going to say they don't see us as a people. But if you don't see the person like myself as a human being, How am I supposed to see you other than for what I stated? The sin of Vladimir Zelensky is somewhere else. The problem with Vladimir Zelensky at this point in time is somewhere else. And that's by basically hiding himself behind some imaginary issue known as Counteroffensive, which is fine, as I stated. All the, any kind of strategy is fine, but the strategy that leaves you without fucking artillery shells, that's a bad strategy with, I'm not going to say delay, of fighter jets and so on, but... It's, it's, it's just the whole picture about it is just upside down. It's a really, really, really bad picture. And it's, you know, unfortunately, the picture that opens Vladimir Putin also the way, because it's not necessary what you see right there for a sale of Ukraine on a scale. It's now this scenario here that is coming out is more likely. When it comes to the politicians like this dude here that you see right there, however, I will tell you, you don't ever fucking know what's going on. Just like with Donald Trump. That politicians like this are always correct. 
because no matter what they do, it always comes out right. It's impossible that you can prove them wrong because they are at the top of pyramid. And as long as they exist as, a, as an option and they have options open, whichever option is more convenient is basically most likely the option that comes out. For right now, due to losses, Vladimir Putin suffered. This became more likely than even the sale of Ukraine. But it's one of the two. Definitely, however, is this is not a war for Ukraine. I don't see this anything about Ukraine here. When you tell me that Ukrainian soldiers don't have for artillery shells, never mind fighter jets and so on and all that stuff, and when you tell me, Joe Biden, that, and you keep repeating this, that it will Russian soldiers see American soldiers face to face in a combat. If Russia crosses into any space, into space of any NATO member country, then you're just saying to me, fuck it, man. You're never going to see us in Ukraine. You get it? So the scenario that we would actually see, what we all hoped for, would be repelled Russian troops from Ukraine is more likely, you know, with the participation of the NATO troops in it, is more likely out of the picture. And it will not happen. That's a bad news, not only for people of Ukraine, but for the entire world, I have to say. For such president like this, for me, when it comes to all this, is a failure. It was all about the fear of what's going to be if Joe Biden no longer is going to be the president. How it's going to be others that they what they're going to do is they're going to uh, there there will be no power, there will be no support for Ukraine and so on and so forth. Well, I mean, if I confronted you right now with these issues and you would not have the answer, you could answer me with. You would not have legitimate answer. You could answer me with. This isn't about American troops only in Ukraine participating, which case should have been already a long time ago. This is about basic fucking artillery shells, about that basic equipment that Ukrainian military reports is not coming to, uh, to Ukraine. This is about a German budget that... Uh, pushed away American budget. <clears throat> this is about now about Germany. This is no longer about getting German funds due to necessities to fight the Cold War enemy, common Cold War enemy, but it's now about the German funds about the German military, etc., 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 to which, by the way, at the end of the World War II, the world have already compromised, will never participate in foreign wars, conflicts, etc., 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 unless it would be under the directive of United States of America, actually, NATO allies, Western allies, and so on. Yeah? Am I correct about that or not? So we, we are talking about the totally other issues, completely non-aligned with liberation of Ukraine. We are talking about taking Ukraine for a deadly right by the so-called Western allies. The United States of America lost war in Vietnam, where they fought North 
Vietnamese. And with what was overwhelming support of Vietnamese people from China. And probably Vietnamese people alone realizing that we were better off without American assistance. Therefore, with the lack of uh, acceptance into environment. But in Ukrainian case, we are facing with exactly opposite case from the one from the one we have seen in Vietnam. We see people willing to fight for their homeland, for the nation, uh, who more than willing to fight, united, and a total lack of response. Uh, from the so-called Western allies, in this case, the one that should take the lead in it, the one who liberated Europe during the Second World War II, United States of America, basically. It's not paving its way. This president is a failure. This is a guffy fuck, if you ask me. It is embarrassing to have United States of America president as such, because the wars are serious matters, borders are defended in a moment that are crossed by the enemies, not stalled for two years, so the enemy can basically ditch itself in the ground and fortify itself. expanding its ability to induce losses while effectively effectively further engaging in war against Ukraine and boosting its economy at expense of war invasion and that's why i would say that it's time to find the president that will fight the war as the wars are fought and not somebody who have committed himself to either the sale of Ukraine or to causes that are going to have the worst impact, not only for the entire world, as we know, but also people of Ukraine. I wouldn't be doing this video to you today if I would have seen anything human in this so-called allies and i have to say i am disgusted i am repulsed to note that west would actually go and push down throat to ukraine somebody like the man that has his hands up over there in a really psychotic way like you know like a solver, you know, of this whole fucking mess and so on and so forth. This war is getting ugly. He got an ugly face with already some people completely crossed out from the picture. The question only is how many more people are going to get crossed out of the picture and how far this war is going to develop. Russia is not a crazy country, I would tell you. Putin doesn't know absolutely everything. Knows a lot, but there are state secrets, there are state issues that Putin was not entitled to. That means it could be, there'll be a whole, a lot, a lot, a lot of more people crossed out and it could get really, really ugly, uglier than ugly. The last time to start the war in Ukraine was seven months ago. And that is the loss I'm going to attribute to Joe Biden and American diplomacy, as well as to the German diplomacy, which, by the way, as I stated, should be guided, operated, supervised by those who won the World War II 80 years ago. I don't know how uh, how this issue is going to develop, 
with Zelensky, uh, with his generals, uh, but to search for blame within a military personnel that, in my opinion, have effectively fought way superior enemy. And you can read here about he, the soldiers, how they make the estimate. This year, the numbers, the numbers talk, and the numbers are not bad. 3,000 tanks, I don't know, 5,000 additional armored vehicles, whatever. Ukrainian people fought and did so successfully. The much-needed assistance, however, is dwelling. Not that it only did not arrive, but it greatly dwelled, and it's critical. For what this is going to be about, what now this is going to uh, solve the issues by getting people fired uh, or president stepping down himself, uh, I have no clue. I don't know how this is going to solve any, any issues, any kind of issues. Um, I wish I had a proposition. I wish I would tell you what to do. But this is, this is not my job. This is the job of, of the Ukrainian president who should make sure that, you know, that the picture is updated. Can go and paint the picture to the people about something that goes on, actually, that is, you know, uh, I'm going to put it this way. I'm going to put it this way, because I don't know what's happening, really, in all this mess. Zelensky is being under the great psychological pressure, and I did observe this tactic from the West that every fucking time I got my paws on him, every fucking time I got my paws on NATO, as far as supplying Ukraine, it was always the promises that would come out. I could see the relief in his eyes. He always knew how to trigger certain instrument, certain element that it would be in preparation before the war in Ukraine. So that he could justify his stay there. But this is not what this is about. When you're doing stuff like this, you're just justifying your stay there. When you're not updating the picture, when you're not telling what exactly is going on. And I understand you have to, as you, you brainwash me, you have to do this to get any kind of help from the West. I understand that stuff. I get it. You're obligated. You must do this so that... You know, the West keeps you around and so on and so forth. And so they can, you know, it, it seems to me that the West completely have policed. Police, you know, like you police, like you fucking tell, you move in and you tell even what news their outlets would be allowed to publish. Therefore, Ukrainian outlets would be allowed to publish. Who would be allowed to say anything about it? Which, in that case, it would not be fault from Zelensky. But I'd be damned if I'm going to let go and be silent about, watch this, basically, how uh, the whole picture is turning really, really shitty, sour. With now Ukrainian people uh, 
pointing fingers at one another with a very, very limited military arsenal, with actually greatly reduced military arsenal and with a Russian machinery uh, just boosting its production and uh, income and so on and so forth. That's something that uh, it does not it does not justify it does not justify stay of any of these politicians something needs to be done about this i got used to seeing zelensky i started to like him uh i disliked the plane that was smashed down in belgorod uh, that was the stuff that uh, triggered the memories on what was a lot, a lot, a lot of mutual cooperation, mutual issues that also West required Zelensky to go accordingly with. And I am glad that Ukraine have taken uh, steps to point out there was no prisoners of war, Ukrainian prisoners of war, uh, at the time of the incident of the plane crash that took place a few days ago, because they do not return from Russia. Uh, uh, this was the issue that was that was translated to me that certain Ukrainian prisoners, uh, prisoners of war, no longer would want to return to war. That means that they would be like a saboteurs. They would be causing problem in the Ukrainian military deliberately for the sake of Russia, and they no longer would want to return back to Ukraine. Uh, and on the other hand, you know, more rational Russian sadistic stuff suggested it would be a soldiers that simply interrogated in Russia heavily for whom they would realize that are not suitable to ever come back to Ukraine. That means they would kill the shit out of these people in Ukraine, in Russia. And they would never return them under the fake death certificate they would issue for the victims of plane crash days for which they suggested the 65 prisoners of war, Ukrainian prisoners of war, was killed. I'm glad, and I, I am going to say that uh, uh, that's an important stuff, which you have to make sure that something like this would not happen. I would even attribute to Zelensky. What, what hurt me, however, the most is that there were troops left in, in Mariupol for which Zelensky knew that kind of stuff. That's the stuff. That's a cancer. That cancer of the trust that was developed throughout this case when I witnessed this negotiations between Zelensky and Vladimir Putin in respect to Mariupol. Because I could never possibly understand that you will give up the best of Ukraine. And it was like it would go all under uh, clouds of Nazis, basically. Uh, for which Zelensky even claimed that Ukraine had to agree to China and to India. That there will be no tolerance for any kind of Nazis and stuff like this, that they would mutually on both sides destroy them and so on and so forth i don't know it's very difficult for me to believe this kind of stuff very very difficult to believe this kind of stuff i do not i'm not aligned to nazis and as i stated i would not even allow nazis to join anything for me you have to be a normal person to join anywhere uh but uh, i have this policy no man left behind. This is the policy that obligates me even uh, into my rather losing men 
than leaving one fucking man behind. You understand? And this is the policy of the U.S. troop, of American troops. They will not leave the man behind, no matter what. They don't go to the extent of losing more people to enemy fire for rescuing one person, but they do have ability, they always find a way to retaliate severely and find the way basically to cut through whatever it takes with whatever it takes to get to that person for the cost of whatever they would lose in a battle the enemy would sure pay much more greater than casualty than what otherwise is what i'm trying to say leaving the people behind is one policy i i uh, i do not i adhere to the policy of everybody if pulled out everybody's pulled out and under those circumstances, I possibly agree to the policy that I would have troops along the border as designed by both parties already, stationed for two years before i would start to really you know a question to zelensky is what the fuck are you gonna do man because these troops are there already for two years they are now ditched they are now dug inside they are now well protected uh it's very difficult to assault them and every day it's going to be more and more difficult to assault them they are getting more and more modernized What the fuck does it take you for you to tell you for you to tell the world that uh, the Western support is bullshit, that you have been left far behind, that you are not achieving the performance otherwise you should have? Um, Russians are using a prohibited thermobaric bombs, weapons. Um, how much more with the 500 kilo bombs that are dumping them on Ukrainian soldiers' military? And it was a such a great deal. It was a such a great deal when you had those uh, weapons also coming from the U.S. to Ukraine. Uh, what are the cluster bombs? How much more the hell are these people going to have to take before you're going to stress the issue that West is not providing Ukraine, you basically, with weapons that could match anywhere the effectiveness and brutality of Russian, basically, tools of extermination. Because there's are your people dying there all over the place and they don't have for the fucking shells, literally. Those are the questions basically that I have that I would want to stress to Zelensky. This is no good. I'm not going to say the whole thing is not good. But it's not enough. It's outperformed. It's outtimed for seven months. And you have literally the countries throughout the Europe now with Germany stressing the issues such as housing crisis and I don't know what kind of crisis and so on. Fuck this. What kind of fucking crisis in Germany? I don't want Germans to have a fucking crisis. Who wants Germany to have a crisis? As I stated, Germany should not have any fucking crisis because it shouldn't be responsible in the first place for what's happening in Ukraine. Germany lost its responsibility to run affairs on a foreign soil during the war incursions, especially those on Europe. Finding enemies such as is a Russian enemy for Russian troops, really is uh, for German troops, really is a yes under the certain circumstances. And those circumstances definitely require None other troops more than American troops. None other troops more than French troops. 
None are troops more than British troops. You get it? That's all the hell I'm saying. I don't want to hear about we have crisis now all over there. We have this. You know about fucking crisis. You already know about all those crises that were before, before the wars, the war before war started. And it's exactly because of those fucking crises that you should never ever have allowed Ukraine to lose so much land. It's exactly because of those crises that on a day of attack on Ukraine, your troops should have entered Ukraine. It's exactly because of those crises that your tanks should have been deployed to Ukraine or to the neighboring areas of Ukraine before the war started so they could enter the war zone as needed, basically. And they were not. The whole process of what we have seen, two-year process, was a process of delay. What we told you it's going to come, what we approved, never fucking came. Or it came delayed. Most of it didn't even come. Now it's the whole thing picture like this. So that's a job of the president that he based on a half a million lives lost, 10 million refugees, country burned to the ground, civilian targets targeted mercilessly, quarter of the country gone almost. The most fertile land in the entire Sea line, seashore of Ukraine almost. In the hands with Crimea, with a jewel of the world, Crimea, in the hands of Russia. So this is this is not basically this is not how you defend your ally, this is not how you support your allies and so on. This is not what the fuck you do. This is not the war that Ukraine is fighting for its sake. How you're going to resolve these issues, I do not know. But the picture is shitty. The picture does not look good. Nothing really here is new. And I'm not interested in... I'm interested in a... Uh, solutions to this. Can you provide solutions for this? What kind of solutions? How effective those solutions are going to be? It's money, it's time consuming, it's life consuming, it's hardware consuming war in Ukraine that have produced exactly what I ground base for what you see here yes it did but it did not produce for the people of ukraine shit so far they paid dearly they paid dearly for what you see right there and if this is about to happen they're going to pay even more dearly because anybody in your world is nothing, basically. My case was used to prove this.